Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today we are going to look at the Sunlu filament connector and this is going to be a solution for a problem that already has been solved using an AMS like for a bamboo. But because not everybody has a deep pocket to buy a system that costs 1500 bucks, the filament connector comes in pretty easy to connect all your loose ends. We are also going to look at this beer right over here. It says Kerel. Kerel is actually the Dutch translation of dude, which is the number one tier of the channel. If you are interested for only one buck, you can become a member of the channel, just like these champs right over here. This video is not sponsored by Sunlu. They only provided this product for free for me to test out and all my words and beers are on my own. First, let's talk about the beer. And if you're wondering why the hell is he talking about beer? Well, it is all your fault. Because one month ago, I posted a little community post asking you guys if you actually were interested in the filament connector. And 60% of you guys uh, voted beer. So here it is, Kerel uh, says it all <laughs> on the bottle. It's an India Pale Ale and it tastes a little bit like um, it has a lot of hop in it. I'm not really into a lot of hop. Uh, so yeah, for me, this is meh, not my favorite beer, but it is also not awful. Back to the Sunlu filament connector. This little thing on the website right now costs about 32 euros and 57 cents. It is marked down from 41.88, but knowing Sunlu, they always have a permanent promotion on the products. So right now this costs 32 euros and it is shipped for free at your door. So for 32 euros, you have a little system right over here with these little things that are going to be used to join your filaments together. Sunlu was so gracious to send me two spools of PLA plus 2.0. So thank you guys, we are going to test this out. But I also have something in mind. Uh, thank you Uncle Jesse for stealing my idea, but we have something else we are going to try out. But right now I want to see how this system works. So there's not a lot of information in the box, but we did get a little paper on how to use this uh, filament system. The only thing we can see is that there was also a little USB cable included in the packaging, but uh, there was no adapter. So right over here, we have an adapter. Let's try it out. So this is actually pretty annoying. The cable is not that long, so you will have to sit somewhere where we have an outlet. Let's plug it in. Right, the screen is lighting up and we have a little on logo. And there is nothing happening. We have nothing. Okay, here on the back it says adapter specifications input 5 volts 2 amp. This is 5 volt 1 amp. All right, so we are back. This is a 5 volt 2 amp adapter. I stole it from my wife. Sorry, dear. <laughs> he will get it back after the video. Let's try it again. And sure enough, the display is working right now. So it is really important that you are going to use the right adapter for this thing. The one amp didn't work. It definitely needs a two amp adapter. So the screen, it is nice and visible. We have PV and SV. Uh, so this is the actual value right now. It is heating up. We can see the number change. And this is the preset for PLA. And right here we have a, a little thing. Now it's blinking on PLA. I think now we can toggle between all the things. Yep, so if we push in the corner, we are toggling between all the filaments. And uh, if we push it again, we can also change the preset if we want it hotter or colder. But for this video, I'm going to try the presets. All right, so there is definitely a good and a not so good way, but I'm going to try them both to see what's going to happen. So in the manual, they are asking you if you're going to snip your wire to not do it like this. This is just cutting it straight. This is not the way you should do it. You should, uh, I'm sorry, what the hell is your problem? I think it's just on temperature. Yeah, it seems to be on temperature. <laughs> All right, so they are actually asking you to snip it at an angle like this. So this is angled. Let's do the same for the other one. Let's angle it. This is snipped. We are going to shove this piece right over here on top of it like that. So right now you can see there is a big void in the middle. So we will have to twist it like this. So those two ends are meeting dead on with the two angles. And now we are going to put it in the machine. So this is already pretty interesting. I think it's some kind of a PTFV tube. So in order to make them seat good together, you get some wrinkly stuff like this. And this is actually probably what you are going to have sitting around in the shop. It's all going to be eeny beeny little things and they are all going to curl even more like this. So I'm going to try and put it in the machine or what I can do is I can try to match it 
so it's not a big annoying thing. Call it the other way. All right, so yeah, this is much better. Okay, so let's open this thing up. There is a little push button right over here. This flips up the cover, and I think that we need to put that thing right over here. This metal piece is going to be bloody hot, so don't touch it. Okay, I'm going to try and put that nicely in the middle like that. Let's push it. Okay, so it's beeping. So there is definitely a sensor in it, warning me. Well, this is now super flexible. So I'm going to let it cool down into its original shape. Yeah, it is pretty weak. I can just put it apart like that. So I'm going to try it again. Okay, so this is my last attempt. One thing I already noticed is I have pushed right up here. This is freaking hot. So you can only push on these parts and on the silver part. Everything else is going to be freaking hot and you're going to burn yourself. So we actually have a cutting thing right over here. There is a blade inside of this to cut this uh, shrink tube or the PTFV tube or whatever it is. So let's try it out. Okay, so I'm pushing on it. It is probably now cut into the tubing. If I can get it out. The tubing is split right over here. As you can see, now we can peel it off. So this is waste now. And if we look, <laughs> I almost broke the filament right over here, but it looks like the filament is actually joined together. And it is pretty strong. I'm pulling it as hard as I can. I am really jerking it and now it broke. We can see that there is some blue remaining on the gray and some gray on the blue. So yeah, it is definitely working. Is it the easiest thing? I don't know. Let's test it some more. Okay, so the first few times was a bit finicky. It was a bit uh, awkward to do so. So I'm going to turn it back on for PLA. And we are going to try it once more. But this time I'm hoping to not dick around too much. So I think it's definitely important that you are angling the cuts of your filament. If you are not, it is probably very weak. All right, so it is done. Here are the results. So right here, you can see these are the two flat pieces pushed together. And I have to say, this is actually also pretty strong. I cannot break it just by pulling it. And then we have the ones that are cut at an angle. You can actually see it that they are cut at an angle and these should be even stronger than the other one. So we have made an endless piece of filament and a nice necklace. Now we have seen uh, other people do some uh, color gradient things and all of that. I'm going to try and do something different. I actually want to combine PETG and TPU and make something that uses the flexibility of TPU in combination with PETG because those filaments apparently stick pretty good together. So I'm going to design something. I'm going to uh, glue a bunch of stuff together with this Sunlu filament joiner and <laughs> yeah. I will see you in a few, I think. So we are back, we have done a few tests and I have good news and bad news. The good news is this filament connecting system works absolutely perfect. I had absolutely zero issue using it. You get, however, a lot of waste trying out. You have these little things right over here. 
those sleeves are not heat shrinks. They are probably some kind of a PTFE tubing to keep your filament in shape. A few things I have learned is that when your filament is too hot and you want to uh, cut it right over here. So right over here we have a slot. That slot has a little knife in it to cut this PTFE tubing when you put in your filament uh, like this. When you close this lid and the filament is uh, still a little soft from uh, heating it up, you will squish your filament and you will get extrusion issues. Mine just snapped off because the filament was not the correct diameter and it couldn't pass the heat break. Well, that was the only thing uh, that I could actually complain about the Sunlu filament connect. So that thing absolutely worked and I wanted to do something unique. So right over here we have uh, yeah, all my failed prints. So I have tried this uh, combination of PETG and TPU and uh, yeah, it didn't take all that long. Very weak sticking of the PETG and the TPU one. It is actually super easy to pull off. So this was an epic fail. Then I tried to combine it with ABS because I had a feeling that it would do better with ABS. I also redesigned the uh, curl system to bend it and that also gave me one massive epic fail but it still is working and we can actually see that the TPU binded very well with the ABS. So this was the last one I wanted to do. It's a little bit dirty because it is actually pretty flexible and the whole top was moving while printing. That's why we get a lot of uh, nasty stuff of this ABS. And in the middle we can see there is a piece of TPU and the TPU was actually pretty wet. All my filament right now is just sitting over there on the shelving without protection. So I didn't have enough time or I have to say I didn't prepare well enough. The TPU was wet and you can definitely see that there is a huge amount of stringing. Now, that is not the most important question. Did the Sunlu provide me something that was actually a lot easier to just say, pause this layer, change out the filament and just doing it that way. This actually took a lot of calculation to get the TPU right in the middle. So we have the flexibility where we want it. I had to measure it. Then I weighed it on the scale to get the exact amount of grams on the scale. So I knew that it was actually a bit in the middle of this thing. So, was it worth it? Absolutely not, I would not recommend. But did we actually make something that is, yeah, I would say pretty cool? Well, let's see it, right? Can we bend it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We can bend this thing and we actually made something that you could compare with a flexible joint. So this is something I uh, designed really quickly in Fusion 360. And now you can see that we are actually uh, bending this thing. This could be useful for a lot of different things, but for this use case it's just for demonstration purposes. So with a lot drier TPU, I think we would do a better job. Not only that, we used ABS settings, so it was pretty hot for the TPU. There was no fan cooling going on, so it's a bit a uh, combination of everything. So right now we have something actually really cool to fidget with. We have a combination of ABS and TPU and that all thanks to the filament connect. Now there are some complaints and the only thing I can actually complain about is that they don't give you a power break. You at least need uh, one of those adapters for your phone and it needs to be 2 amp. Anything lower than 2 amp is not going to work. It's going to be too weak to heat this thing. There's also some neat functionality built in. So when the filament heater is at temperature, then it starts beeping. You put in your filament, then you clamp this little black piece when it's open. You put in your filament, then you clamp it. And after a certain time, it's going to beep at you to say that the filament is ready. It's going to be a little bit flexible. And that's where this air hose came in. You take it out of this thing and then you cool it with some uh, compressed air and it took about I think three or four seconds before it cooled down enough so you can cut this little PTFV tubing right here in this thing. So really neat design. I think the pricing, yeah, it's let's say correct. We have a little heater core right over here and then we have a piece of metal on top and it heats up just by getting in contact with it. Another neat function I found out is this system actually turns off automatically. I have done a lot of joints and every time I ran to the computer to figure out how much grams or meters I needed for this little design right over here, this thing automatically turned off 
whenever you, I think it's a few minutes of non-use. So it has an automatic turn off feature, which is actually pretty nice. And this package actually is only using about a maximum of 10 watts. The adapter I used was five volts, two amp, which is uh, 10 watts of maximum power usage. So it is very low wattage the only thing is that with the amount of cable that you have right over here you are basically doomed to get somewhere where there is a plug or like i do when you have an extension cord now these days we are actually seeing more printers with some sort of an ams system which means when this pool runs out it is going to automatically switch you have a few open source ones and then you have the ones from a bamboo lab and i think any cubic also has one and the new realities are going to have some sort of an ems system so this is actually actually going to be for uh, I think people that are not going to buy printers that are going to be well over 500 or thousand bucks this is very affordable and I can definitely see if you are doing a lot of printing that joining these filaments is going to be very handy it definitely works the only thing I'm a bit concerned of is that you will need to use a disposable system with these tubings and you are at the grace of Sunlu to get these in your hands to continue using them I'm not sure what these are going to cost but as soon as they are on the site on sale I would say grab a bag or two and you are probably set for a few years all in all neat system pretty affordable I think you can even plug it into a power bank not tested it but I think that even a power bank could be a solution to get this thing more mobile so all in all a neat system it does what it needs to do and about the beer not the biggest fan it's an IPA it has a bit of that hop taste which is not my absolute favorite. If you are still here and watching the video, thank you very much, especially these guys for supporting the channel by becoming a member. For one buck a month, you can become a member too and join some little benefits that are uh, supporting the channel directly. If you're not interested in that, make sure to subscribe to the channel and help me out. I would love to reach the 10,000 mark. Thank you for watching and guys, I see you in the next one.